104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. We head south, my friends, to the co-host of the all-new early game on 107.5, the game. Will Gunther with us. Uh, Will, what was your morning like with all those Gamecock fans freaking out over the, the big upset over Duke? Well, thank goodness it was it was rather easy because, uh, number one, it was St. Patrick's Day around here, and I kind of I might have enjoyed that a little bit too much. And then staying <laughs> up uh, – Staying up late last night into a little after midnight to watch that game. So thankfully, we allowed the listeners to carry the show this morning. But it was obviously something that um, has never happened here. Has never happened in Columbia. And to beat a team like Duke, who there are some ties to from the ACC days back in the '70s. So even though they haven't played a whole lot, there's a bit of a rivalry. So there was a lot of very happy Gamecock fans this morning. They were more than willing to jump up early and go on a radio show. Is the Biggest reason why the turnarounds happened because of their head coach Frank Martin. Yeah, I, yeah, it is. It is. Frank is uh, Frank is a, a really good coach. I mean, I'd followed his career back back when I was with ESPN doing basketball recruiting, and so I was a well well aware of what Frank was doing at Kansas State and bringing in some of those guys. And in some time, I had a chance to spend with him at a few different AAU uh, events, kind of uh, in his again during his time at Kansas State. And it, you're talking about a guy who's come in with a vision, and uh, it took him five years, and he he was able he's improved the recruiting classes each and every year. He's gotten guys like Sandarius Thornwell, like PJ Dozier, and even a guy last night that had 15 points, who's originally from South Carolina but played up there around you guys, uh, Rakim Felder, and they've continued to improve the program, and and they're buying into Frank Martin's defensive first philosophy, and that's what you saw. We'll go to the train now from 107.5, the game in South Carolina. Now, we talked to you in the past, and you know, hoops is almost a, a, an afterthought in South Carolina. Is that is that definitely changing right now? It definitely is. I mean, let's you know, I, I know you guys probably could care less, but uh, obviously down here, the women's team is also in the Sweet 16. What Dawn Staley's doing, and I think I think I, I don't I apologize for not having any kind of facts on women's basketball attendance i'm sure you guys would be all over that but <laughs> we you know they i think they've led the led the nation in attendance somewhere they've been right there with connecticut one and two the last five or six years you know i i don't know if you guys have really gotten into the history of south carolina basketball i've considered them one of the five worst programs across the board uh in in power five basketball the last you know the last 40 years you're talking about a team who had not won an ncaa tournament game since 1973 you're talking about a team who had made just uh, five appearances in the NCAA tournament since 1973. You know, there is a lot of reason for fan apathy uh, down here, and so definitely something that people are very excited about right now. And Will, uh, you know, you brought up women's basketball. Our, our ladies, the U Albany Great Danes, got UConn in the first. That was their first draw. So yeah. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little Great. bitter, it's a little bitter, a little salt in the wound right yeah, now. Yeah, things could have been a, a little <laughs> bit worse. Yeah, compared to us here, but you won't. But he, uh, Sundarius Thornwell, the type of player he is, we always see this breakout player come out during the NCAA tournament. How good is he? And is he good enough to carry this team even farther along in the NCAA tournament? Well, yes and no. And and let me say that when South Carolina's been at their best for them to win is how they played last night. Thornwell had 20 last night, I believe. I, don't, I think he had right at 20. But you saw Dwayne Nota step up, P.J. Dozier step up, Chris Silva, who I think is the, the most important player actually on that team when he stays out of foul trouble. And he had a double-double last night, and that's a young man who's really coming along. South Carolina's actually lost uh, all the games that, that Cinderius Thornwell has had high po- point totals. He had 34 against Kentucky, and they lost. He had 44 against Alabama in that four-overtime game, and they lost. Uh, I when he starts, when he takes over like that, there's a tendency of the other guys to almost back down and watch him try and do his thing. And that's okay. not resulted in wins for South Carolina throughout the regular season. So is he good enough? Yes. But that's not really the recipe for them if they're going to get past Baylor and or another game and get to the Final Four. Will Gunter with us right now, the all-new early game uh, at uh, 107.5, the game on Twitter uh, from South Carolina, helping us prepare as as the tournament goes on right here on 104.5, the team. It's amazing to think back a few weeks ago, almost a few months ago now, when South Carolina played Syracuse basketball. I think we talked, you said, look, the game wasn't even on TV here in South Carolina, and how things have changed when it comes to basketball in that area. But how can this be maintained? Does it have to still involve Frank Martin staying at South Carolina? Does it have to be consistent winning over years? What makes South Carolina and basketball, I guess, improve the popularity of the sport in that area? It's continued winning. I mean, it's just whether it's Frank Martin. Now, what will be interesting, Frank Martin got a brand-new contract last year. They restructured his deal. It's actually one of the reasons that 
everybody's kind of been quiet uh, around here about the possibility of maybe an LSU or a Missouri or I don't think he's I don't think he'd be in play for a for an Indiana but maybe a North Carolina State uh, his buyout this year was 4.8 million dollars now that they've done something that they haven't done they ever going to the Sweet 16 now that they've won, done something they haven't done since 1973 and that's win an NCAA tournament game I'll be kind of fascinated to see what the athletic director Ray Tanner does to step up and take care of Frank Martin and solidify him longer at the University of South Carolina. We talk about all that television money that's coming in from the SEC network and, and that the SEC is making. It doesn't help in football. Contrary to what everybody wants to think, it doesn't help in football. Everybody down here in the South, whether it's Clemson or South Carolina or Texas or you know whomever you want to refer to, they're spending money on football. Where that money benefits is now South Carolina has more money to go out and really keep Frank Martin in the fold, you know, push him up to three point five, four million dollars and give him incentives to be able to pay him like that. So yes, keeping Frank Martin is gonna be vital. Will you gonna roll with the team up to Madison Square Garden? I am not. No, and I have family up there and I've I've actually I, apparently people are confused. They think that uh, radio people just get free tickets. <laughs> I've had more family members up there texting me today uh, wondering, A, if I'm coming up, and, and B, if I can get them tickets. I don't think they want to see me. I just, I think it started with, hey, we'd like to see you, but if you can get us tickets, you can stay down south. So, I mean, you know how you northerners are, good people. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're great people. Can, so you can't, you don't have tickets? You don't? Please? It's only about two hours from <laughs> no, us, man. Yeah, no, no tickets, a media pass, no tickets. I actually uh, was laughing with my boss yesterday morning about that because we were talking about me going up last night. Greenville's an hour and a half, two hours from here. And I said, well, you know, by the time by the time I get back, it'll be 1 a.m. And, you know, I'd be at the studio at 6. I said, unless you guys are putting a, a bed in the studio, I'm just going to hang around here and watch the game on TV if you don't mind. They they were perfectly okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Will, we appreciate you. Best of luck moving forward. I mean, the, your, uh, your, your South Carolina team, they blew up everybody's bracket, and, and it was fun to watch it happen because uh, aside from Grayson Allen, who needs Duke around anyway? Oh, they listen, North Carolina, South Carolina fans, North Carolina, Tar Heel fans, and South Carolina fans completely hate each other. Last night, they were united. It's amazing how, how Duke can unite people together. Maybe that's all we needed was to have Trump and Hillary actually fighting to beat Duke and everybody would have united for the country back in the, in the fall. <laughs> well, we appreciate you, man. And uh, again, hopefully we're talking to you after the uh, Sweet 16. Hey, certainly, man. Thank you, guys. Enjoy it. Y'all take care.